All right. Now, uh, you remember we talked about um, uh, the demonstrations in the Netherlands and indeed uh, about, uh, by farmers who were being required to reduce the amount of nitrate they produced, which not only uh, was going to involve a significant reduction in the amount of fertilizer they could use, but also in, uh, in the number of cows they could have, which, which would result in the killing uh, and the destruction of, of lots and lots and lots of cows. Um, and that in, in, uh, in the Netherlands, they actually organized as a political party and, and I think they, they got the, the, the highest, the most votes in the, in the latest parliamentary election. I, I haven't followed that to find out what the consequence of that are because I think that the, um, that the actual mandate to, to, to reduce the number of cows was actually uh, from, from, the, from the courts uh, just upholding EU kind of mandates. So we'll follow up on the Netherlands story and try to figure out now that they have political power, what are the farmers actually going to do? What, what can they do and what will they do to get around these ridiculous, draconian, insane um, uh, requirements? Anyway, uh, th this, is, uh, this is spreading because, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but one of the biggest creators of CO2, or, or maybe it's not CO2, but uh, certainly of... Uh, uh, greenhouse gases are uh, cows. Uh, their farts, they uh, you know, a, 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 a big part, methane, right, big part of uh, greenhouse gases. And uh, this is why a lot of the climate change nuts, the, the real extremists, want us all to be on a vegan diet, to stop eating meat. This is why, so we don't grow, so we don't cultivate cows, so we shrink the cow population. This is why... Um, they, they are big into artificial meat, big into trying to genetically build, create uh, something that tastes exactly like beef, even though it's not beef. So there's a big push to try to get us off beef consumption. Of course, good luck with that. We are all beef eaters. We love beef. We eat a lot of beef, pork, chicken. You know, we just eat a lot of meat, a lot of red meat. And, and I don't think climate change is going to stop that. I don't think anybody takes climate change quite seriously enough. I mean, some people do, but it's small numbers of individuals. Most of us don't take it seriously enough to stop eating beef. Um, so uh, one of the things that is happening is that governments are imposing mandates on ranchers and farmers uh, to, um, you know, to reduce the amount of cows that they have. And uh, the one following up on, uh, on the Netherlands is the Irish, Irish government. Irish farmers are rebelling against uh, a proposal. Uh, the proposal by the government is to cull tens of thousands of cattle uh, a year um, and uh, to kill. Cull is a nice word uh, instead of to kill. Kill tens of thousands of cows every year for three years. Um, this is going to cost uh, uh, you know, a huge amount of money. Uh, hundreds of millions, uh, potentially 200 million euros. Uh, it costs a huge amount of money, but it will reduce, uh, you know, uh, climate change uh, numbers. That is, uh, the, amount of, the amount of greenhouse gases that the country of Ireland emits will be reduced significantly. One question I think uh, one should ask is, you're going to kill tens of thousands of cow cows so the island can meet some, what I would consider, arbitrary target. But what impact? Let's, let's buy into the story of climate change. Let's, let's pretend that this is all real. Uh, not just climate change, but the, the catastrophizing and the horror of it and the, the emergency and the, and the need to do it right now and the lack of technologies to suck in carbon, but, so we have to just stop producing it. Let, let's pretend we buy into all that. Well, what difference is whatever island does make? to the global production of, um, of carbon in the world. Ireland is a tiny little country, five, five million people. It has 0 0.06 of the world's population. It, it produces a tiny bit of, of carbon, even with all the cows that it has. In, in, indeed, it's a very rich country on a per capita GDP, straight basis, not adjusted for prices and stuff. Uh, you know, per capita is 100, over $100,000, um, or GDP per capita over $100,000, which makes it significantly richer than the U.S. 
um, and, and, and any other Western country. And, and that's primarily because it has become a home to a lot of, a lot of major corporations uh, for tax reasons. Um, you know, Island consumes a certain amount of electricity, not that much, even though it's very rich. It doesn't consume a huge amount of electricity because there's just not a lot of people. Um, so even though per person maybe they consume a lot, they don't consume, um, uh, they don't consume, uh, you know, that much. Given particularly given their wealth, wealth and consumption of electricity go together. So they, they they don't produce a lot of carbon footprint. So if you if you just took island to zero, let's say you really you wiped out all the cows, wiped out all the people, I guess, you you literally took their carbon emissions to zero. What impact would have that on climate change? Well, none. None. First of all, it's just too minute of a quantity to make a difference to the, to the effect, right? To the effect of, of, uh, of the greenhouse gases. And, and second, the reality is that more and more greenhouse gases are being emitted. The use of coal is going up. Use of natural gas is mostly going up. Use of gasoline in one form or another is mostly going up. I mean, it, there's some noise goes up and down. Last year, gasoline went down a little bit, but, you know, it, it's still below, in other words, its level in 2019. But this year, it's likely the consumption of gasoline is going to be higher than that, in spite of all the electric cars. So, Ireland is not registering. It doesn't make any difference. And nothing really makes a difference. The reality is that gasoline production, natural gas, coal, all of that is going up, because the fact is that no matter how much the rich world decides, you know, to sacrifice for the sake of more expensive uh, natural gas or more expensive coal or, or just suffer the consequences like in Texas and other places of, of just having an unreliable grid because you're now dependent on wind and solar and all of that stuff. No matter how much the, the, the rich uh, sacrificial West is willing to do that, the rest of the world's not. Poor people are not going to not going to let you get away with that. Uh, you know, the less gas you burn, the more gas they'll burn. They want to be rich, like you. They're not going to accept expensive electricity, expensive power. They're going to find every lump of coal they can and every piece of nat every bit of natural gas that they can, and they're going to try to use it to produce energy and electricity as they should because they don't want to be state poor. So all of these efforts, all of these localized efforts, are just futile and, and, and silly. The world will continue to use fossil fuels as long as it's efficient and cheap to do so. And it might not be efficient and cheap anymore in the West because we're taxing it and we're putting all kinds of curbs on it and we're limiting it and we're destroying our capacity. But it's still going to be efficient and cheap, relatively speaking, in third world countries. If the Russians can't sell gasoline to Europe, let's say because gasoline consumption in Europe has declined, which it hasn't, but let's say it has, then they'll sell it in India and they'll sell it in Africa ultimately, right? People will buy because people want to get rich and uh, solar and wind, if you take out subsidies and you take out all the controls and you take out the, the reliability, the lack of reliability, so you have to add batteries and all that, far more expensive uh, than, uh, than reliable, good, cheap, reliable um, energy. All right, so um, lots of cows going to be killed in uh, Ireland. Uh, we'll see if the farmer rebellion in Ireland is uh, similar to the farmer rebellion in Netherlands. But it's just one little, I mean, the story in itself is not that important. What's important is just this general tendency uh, of people to just go nuts over, over this issue of climate change, uh, no cost-benefit analysis, no real perspective on, um, you know, what they're doing and what benefit it has, even if you take their assumptions seriously. It just arbitrary targets, just shooting for those, not really looking at the entire picture, and then taking those most hysterical of assumptions seriously, like, uh, and, 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 and then destroying people's lives as a consequence. I mean, uh, are the Irish people going to eat less beef, drink less milk? No, they're just going to import it. So Africa will start producing more of the beef and more of the milk, and they'll lower tariffs to Africa so that they can import it from there because they don't, you know, so, so they feel better. They'll feel a little less responsible because their CO2 emissions will go down. 
Now, the fact that their CO2 emissions go down will cause CO2 emissions in Africa to go up because they'll produce more cows, and they'll feel better. But nothing in terms of nothing real, nothing in the world real in any sense, even in terms of net carbon emissions, is going to change. Unless people are really willing to eat less beef. But I don't see any indication of that. And by the way, it's much cheaper anyway to grow food and to bring food in from Africa to Europe than to grow it in Europe. So generally, the entire agricultural sector in Europe should be wiped out, not by government. It should be wiped out by competition. If Europe lower tariffs to zero on agricultural goods, Africa becomes the breadbasket of Europe. And uh, not only does it enhance the economies of Africa, create wealth in Africa, uh, uh, it, 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 it also you know, allows uh, it, Europe to restructure their economies in ways that promote their own um, um, comparative advantage and increases wealth in that sense. Makes food a lot cheaper for Europeans. Yeah, a lot of farmers will be unhappy. Can't make everybody happy, and you shouldn't. That shouldn't be the goal of the policy ever. All right. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.